I hear the heaviest, one of the cornerstones, is about 120 tons. The quality of the curved interfaces is striking, and they fit very close to each other, almost without a gap. The fact that they are almost perfectly fit together has caused some researchers, mistakenly, to decide that the stones were formed or cast from a certain plastic mixture, and different types have been proposed. High on the Cusco Plateau in Peru, at an elevation of over 3,700 meters, stands a structure that has baffled archaeologists for centuries. This is Sacsayhuaman, the mysterious fortress of the Inca, built around the 15th century. Its massive zigzag walls are assembled from stones weighing up to 200 tons, without a trace of mortar or cement. Each block fits so precisely that not even a razor blade could slip between them, even though the Inca had no iron, no wheels, or any mechanical lifting devices. So how do they manage to move and fit these colossal stones with such accuracy using only pre-industrial technology? Archaeologists tell us that the zigzag structure of the walls is no accident. Each lightning bolt angle is designed to disperse seismic energy, preventing vibrations from concentrating in one spot. The stones are cut into irregular, multifaceted shapes, forming a three-dimensional interlocking system that can shift slightly when the ground shakes, then settle back into place. This is why. During the 1650 earthquake that leveled most of Cusco, the walls of Sacsayhuaman remained almost entirely intact. Modern engineers call it architecture that breathes with the earth, a natural earthquake-resistant method that today's building techniques are still trying to emulate. Looking closely at each stone, one notices an almost unbelievable precision. No two are alike, yet all fit perfectly along their undulating faces. The surfaces of many slabs show rounded edges, as if they had been melted or softened to some degree before assembly. Some researchers suggest this could be evidence of a lost technology liquid stone technology, the ability to soften rock using plant compounds or thermal methods. However, many experts counter that skilled craftsmanship, combined with time and large-scale organized labor would suffice to achieve such results. Sacsayhuaman is more than just an engineering feat. Beneath layers of soil and rock, surveys using LIDAR and ground-penetrating radar have revealed a network of deep foundations, along with precisely arranged underground drainage channels. Evidence shows the walls lean inward at a deliberate slight angle, allowing gravity to press the stones tighter under load. These elements indicate that the builders possessed a remarkable understanding of geology and earth dynamics far beyond what history has attributed to them. If Sacsayhuaman was truly a military fortress, why did the Inca invest in sophistication and scale far exceeding defensive needs? Some archaeologists argue it was a ceremonial center for the sun, aligned precisely with the June solstice, the time of the Inti Raimi festival, though its true purpose remains debated. The very existence of this structure raises a bigger question. Could it be that the Inca weren't the first to build Sacsayhuaman? but merely inheritors and expanders of a far older legacy. According to mainstream history, Sacsayhuaman was constructed in the 15th century under Emperor Pachacuti, the legendary leader of the Inca Empire. But as archaeologists dug deeper, what they uncovered shook the entire timeline, right beneath the foundations of the Inca walls. Sediment layers and shattered pottery reveal traces of a culture at least 500 years older, the Kilki culture, existing from around 900 AD. Fragments of ceramics, stone tools, and rudimentary foundations prove that the area was occupied, worshipped, and built upon long before the Inca Empire formed. Meaning, when Pachacuti ordered the fortress built, he may have only been expanding or repurposing a structure that already existed. Notably, no Inca records describe how they built this fortress. Though the Inca were renowned for their memory and oral traditions, no source mentions methods for cutting, transporting, or assembling the stones. Meanwhile, the Spanish who meticulously documented everything they saw in the New World also never described the construction process, only noting that the walls were already there when they arrived in Cusco. Historian Pedro Pizarro, who witnessed Sacsayhuaman firsthand in the 16th century, wrote these stones seem not to have been moved by human hands. No tools were large enough for the task. That statement, nearly 500 years later, still rings true. No traces of metal tools, no transport routes, no evidence of cranes or wheels. At 15, Drake discovered the stage as Jimmy Brooks on Degrassi The Next Generation. He learned precision how to command a lens, how to deliver emotion with restraint. Acting gave him structure, timing, 
and discipline tools that would later make him one of music's sharpest architects. But even then, he felt confined by the role to friends chasing rap dreams. The wheelchair-bound TV character didn't scream authenticity. So, after filming, he'd retreat to tiny studios, sell fun mixtapes, and teach himself how to merge melody with confession. If so, Saksai Huaman isn't just a fortress, but a hybrid of engineering, ritual, and cosmology. The more one studies it, the clearer it becomes that this place doesn't follow the logic of warfare, but the logic of astronomy and spirituality. Many walls and pathways align precisely with the sunrise on the winter solstice, coinciding with the site of the Inti Remi Festival, the Inca's most important ceremony. But if all these alignments were already in place from the Kilka era, could it be that the Inca merely inherited and refined an ancient observatory built to track the sun thousands of years earlier? And if they were truly just inheritors, then the bigger question is who taught them or who laid the first foundations on this Cusco hill? Centuries before history was even written, with no clear answers in the archaeological record. That very silence has paved the way for a host of theories from bold to outlandish. The stone's rounded edges, curved cuts, and polished surfaces have led many researchers to wonder could the Inca have softened the rock instead of chiseling it. Some modern experiments have tested this idea. In 1982, chemist Joseph Davidovitz, founder of the Geopolymer Institute, proposed that many ancient structures might be made from artificial stone, or geopolymer. In this hypothesis, the ancients didn't chisel rock but crushed it, mixed it with a strong alkaline solution, and poured it into molds on site. The result, a material that looks like real stone but is far easier to shape. When samples from Saksai Huaman were analyzed, some blocks showed inconsistent crystal structures, possibly traces of heating or chemical reactions. Local legends tell a different story. The Quechua people of Cusco believe Saksai Huaman was built by giants, or beings they called Gentiles people from before the sun, according to legend. They possessed what we might call the power of the sun, able to melt stones, making them flow and bond together. When the first sun rose, these giants were turned to stone, leaving behind their unfinished work. Mainstream archaeology dismisses these hypotheses entirely. There's no concrete chemical evidence for liquefied stone, no traces of thermal tools, and no giant fossils ever found in Cusco. Yet newer studies reveal one hard-to-dismiss detail. Many stones show surface recrystallization, as if exposed to high heat briefly, enough to alter the crystal structure without damaging the whole block. Some independent geologists offer another explanation. Perhaps the Inca used friction and forced vibration heat to soften surfaces by repeatedly grinding the same spot with wet quartz sand. This process, if done thousands of times, could heat the stone to hundreds of degrees, temporarily making it more malleable. It sounds impractical to us, but for a culture mobilizing tens of thousands of workers over years, such patience was feasible. There's also the theory that Saksai Huaman's builders used sound and frequencies creating resonant vibrations to reduce friction between blocks. At certain points in the site, stones emit a deep hum when struck, as if the entire structure was designed to sing with the earth. To date, no experiments confirm this, but the idea of acoustic resonance is being seriously considered by some archaeological physicists. On the boundary between science and myth, Saksai Huaman becomes a mirror reflecting modern humanity's pride and limitations. We can send probes to Mars, yet we still can't be sure how ancient people without machinery moved and fitted stones heavier than freight cars with absolute precision. And if they truly knew a technique we've forgotten, then the bigger question is, why did that knowledge vanish? Was it lost or deliberately hidden? Every dynasty begins to tremble long before it falls. For Drake, the first fractures appeared quietly buried beneath platinum plaques streaming milestones, and the illusion of control on the surface. He was untouchable beneath it. The pillars that held his empire authenticity, loyalty, and artistry were beginning to splinter. At the Rumikolka Quarry, over 30 kilometers from Saksai Huaman, archaeologists found cut marks matching the sizes of the fortress wall's blocks. The Inca didn't fight the landscape they harnessed it. Slopes were leveled, coated with clay and water, to create natural slides where stones could be inched along by the synchronized pull of hundreds of workers. They used wooden sleds underneath, lubricated with soil and animal fat mixtures. Some teams rotated around large wooden capstans, providing continuous pull instead of jerks. Experiments by engineer Jean-Pierre Pratson in Cusco 
proved this method's feasibility with just 200 people. A 10-ton stone could be pulled up a 15-degree slope, scaled up. Thousands could move larger ones slowly, but surely, on sight. They didn't lift stones, but raised them gradually prying one edge, wedging in wood, and repeating until reaching the desired height. Then, the block was slid sideways into position, and gravity pressed the faces tight. What makes Saksai Huaman endure through centuries is its design principle. The entire wall leans inward by three to five degrees, ensuring gravity always pushes stones toward the foundation's center. The multifaceted interlocking structure disperses seismic energy, while underground drainage keeps the soil dry and stable. When earthquakes hit, the whole wall oscillates slightly, absorbing vibrations instead of resisting them. In this way, the Inca, or perhaps those before them, built a structure both mechanically perfect and seemingly supernatural to modern eyes. No magic, no lost technology, just intellect, human power, and time multiplied to extremes. But the final question lingers if they understood gravity and materials so well. Why leave no blueprints or technical records? Perhaps their secrets were never written down, passed orally as sacred rites. Vanishing into silence when the empire fell, after centuries of study, Saksai Huaman still holds its uncomfortable gaps. Archaeologists have identified the stone sources, transport directions, and assembly techniques, but they can't fully explain the absolute precision of each joint or the odd heat traces on some block's surfaces. Each new discovery opens another chain of questions, and that's why Saksai Huaman is still called the open laboratory of the past. Recent electron microscope surveys show that at certain points. The limestone's crystal structure is slightly deformed, as if subjected to short-term heating, not enough to liquefy, but just enough to soften the surface aligning with the stone-softening hypothesis proposed by earlier researchers. However, no independent chemical analysis has confirmed unusual organic compounds or mineral salts that could explain the phenomenon. Another avenue explored is stone tools and vibration. Modern experiments show that using wet quartz sand, grinding the same spot for extended periods, Friction heat can raise the stone's surface to hundreds of degrees, making it more shapeable. It sounds impossible, but with thousands of workers laboring continuously for months, such results are entirely plausible. Saksai Huaman may not need any lost technology, just a culture where patience spanned generations. Engineers today are also simulating earthquakes with FEM finite element method software to test the wall's interlocking mechanism. Initial results show the zigzag design and multifaceted cuts disperse vibrational energy three times more effectively than flat stone walls. This explains why. After major quakes in 1650, 1950, and 1986, the structure stands nearly intact, while surrounding colonial buildings crumbled. But the biggest gap lies in history's silence. No inscriptions, no symbols, no Inca descriptions detail how they built this fortress. Historians suggest the knowledge may have been transmitted orally as rituals, reserved for priestly and royal engineers, lost with the empire's collapse, if true. Saksai Huaman proves a knowledge guarded like religious secrets, not technical documents, today. Peruvian scientists are planning the ultimate test recreating a small section of Saksai Huaman's wall using ancient materials, tools, and techniques. They'll trial every method from prying, wedging, grinding, to forced vibration polishing to determine the true limits of human hands. Results expected in 2026 could be the biggest advance in over a century of research. If the experiment succeeds, Saksai Huaman will cease to be a symbol of mystery and become evidence of ancient intellect's extraordinary power that humans need no miracles to achieve the unimaginable. But if it fails, we may have to accept a more unsettling possibility that Saksai Huaman's builders knew something modern history no longer comprehends at all. Today, Saksai Huaman is more than an archaeological site. It's a test of our perceptions of the past. Since being recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1983, this structure has become the hub of hundreds of research and preservation projects. Each year, hundreds of thousands of visitors climb its massive stone steps to behold what the Inca, or perhaps someone before them, achieved with bare hands. But the more it's observed, the more Saksai Huaman leaves the modern world in awe we, with all our machinery and technology still can't replicate what they did manually. Japanese engineers once tried reconstructing a section of the wall in 2001 using modern cranes and reinforced concrete. The result, they couldn't achieve the absolute fit between two stones, even with millimeter tolerances. 
It shows that the ancient secret wasn't in materials, but in absolute patience and profound understanding of nature, two things the industrial world is gradually losing. Saksai Huaman's structure continues to inspire modern engineering. Designers of earthquake-resistant buildings in Peru, Japan, and Turkey are studying the multifaceted interlocking principle the Inca applied 600 years ago. It allows walls to shift slightly during tremors instead of resisting seismic forces, absorbing energy rather than being destroyed. In a way, this ancient work doesn't just survive time, it's teaching humanity how to coexist with the earth. Saksai Huaman also evokes a deeper lesson about civilization. We often think progress comes from speed, from inventions, from constant change. But the ancients prove the opposite when you can devote decades, even generations, to a project. You create something time can't destroy. In Cusco, stone isn't just material, it's memory. A witness to patience and wisdom passed across generations without writing. And perhaps that's the true secret of Saksai Huaman. Not lost technology, not extraterrestrial intervention, but a human quality modern civilization has forgotten perseverance and harmony with nature. Saksai Huaman's builders needed no miracles, they were the miracle. As the last light of sunset glides over the colossal stones, illuminating each perfect joint, one feels as if time itself pauses to watch. 600 years on, Saksai Huaman stands a question without an answer, and a reminder the impossible isn't always out of reach. Sometimes it just demands more than one lifetime to achieve.